while the American Heart Association has added sleep to its health heart checklist. It says getting enough sleep is one of life's essential eight. These are eight areas that can determine how strong a person's cardiovascular health is. So how much sleep is enough? Well, for adults, seven to nine hours per night. Those who get less sleep than that run the risk of diabetes and hypertension. Well, for more on the new checklist, we are joined by Dr. Michael Farku. He is a prevention cardiologist at Peter Monk Cardiac Center in Toronto. Dr. Farku, welcome to the show. Let's start with this. Why is this change happening now? Well, Natalie, we know that there's residual risk from the traditional risk factors, such as cholesterol, smoking, and body, and body weight. Um, we know that there still people that fall within those targets have heart attacks and strokes. And so we're looking for other measures to reduce this, what we call residual risk. And sleep is one of them. Very strong evidence, a lot of it generated from our scientists here in Toronto that demonstrate that sleep health really correlates with cardiovascular. So what counts as healthy sleep then? Well, I think it's the quantity and the quality of sleep. They don't get much into the quality issue. And you mentioned about seven to nine hours. I'll just mention that this is actually very personalized. There are folks who are quite healthy, they get six hours of sleep, and there are others that require 10 hours of sleep as adults. So you really need to personalize it, but the range of seven to nine hours gives people a, a very a standard to follow. The other thing is quality of sleep. If your partner notices that you stop to stop, uh, stop breathing at night, which is called apnea, or snore excessively, then that's when we trigger an evaluation on a sleep study. And we have many centers here in Canada that can actually evaluate the quality of your sleep. So let's go back to heart health just for a second specifically, because we know there are some other categories to monitor for that specific sure. uh, you know, measure, metric. What are some of those other categories for heart health? Well, there well, there's four behaviors and there's four measurements. The behaviors include diet, following what I love to call the Mediterranean diet or what the American heart calls the DASH diet, which is a low blood pressure uh, diet. Exercise, about 150 minutes in a week, a fairly vigorous exercise. Uh, and then of course, re re refraining from nicotine has been that one of the other behaviors in addition to sleep. And the measurements are blood cholesterol levels, the level of your blood glucose, uh, your weight, uh, and, um, and, and so those are the major factors that play into it, as well as blood pressure, the target being between 120 and 130 over 80, which is a fairly robust target. Just uh, very quickly here, you mentioned the Mediterranean diet, diet, exercise, nutrition, obviously a big part. The Mediterranean diet, for those who don't know, my husband is obsessed with this, but for those who don't know what that is, what is that? Well, basically, it's a diet that, that emulates what the Spaniards, and particularly those in Barcelona, follow, which is a lot of grains, fruits, vegetables, fish, uh, chicken, and with very small portions of red meat during the week, maybe two or three portions of red meat only. It also involves olive oil and the use of, of those types of uh, ingredients in salads and in our cooking. And now quickly, just jumping to, to food here. We know that the American Health Association has come up with a new way to assess how well people are eating. What are the changes on that front? Well, I think it has to do with uh, a focus on caloric intake. There's a lot of obsession now with um, fasting diets, but it all comes down to the number of calories that you consume in a day and then following this Mediterranean or what they call a DASH diet, which focuses more on low sodium and management of hypertension. So there's just a checklist that you can go through and make sure that the diet that you follow uh, is compliant with their recommendations. What I ask patients to do is have a diary of their diet over a week or so, and then go back and check it with the American Heart Checklist. So we have seen these changes coming up in the United States. Do you think they're going to be seen adopted here in Canada as well? There's no question. Uh, we are all members of the American Heart Association, those of us, of us in academic medicine. I serve on a number of American Heart Committees, and uh, clearly the Canadians will follow suit 
I think we're also in Canada focusing more on this residual risk, intake of alcohol, what people don't want to hear on a Canada Day weekend. But alcohol is one of the greatest toxins to the heart and needs to be, um, that needs to be addressed, as does adverse childhood events. People that are exposed in childhood to uh, very stressful situations and neglect. These folks have chronic disease in the long run. And we're focusing a lot of that at the Peter Monks Cardiac Center to try to deal with these other risk factors that will become part of this essential aid. And talking a little bit about food in general, we know that here in Canada, starting in 2026, all packages with high levels of sugar, salt, saturated fat, that will come with clear warning labels in this country. It's part of an effort, as we know, to promote healthier eating choices and reduce chronic health risks. What do you make of all that? I think it's very important. We have individual interventions, and then we have societal or community interventions. We need to provide people with access to fruits and vegetables. As you go east or west of Young Street in Toronto, you'll see fewer and fewer establishments providing fresh fruit and vegetables. This needs to stop. This is part of the socioeconomic gradient that we see. That will also be addressed. But it's very important that government um, regulates this, and labels are, are important. People read them, and more importantly, your children will read them and come home and tell you what to do. Well, thank you, Dr. Farku. Please stay with us. You're watching CBC News Network.